So nakikita pa yung ano, yung presentation. Population ecology. Okay, sige, proceed na. So balikan natin yung yung definition ng population which is the number of organisms living in the same uh, of the same species that live in a particular geographic area at the same time with the capability of interbreeding so different different branches of sciences sciences different uh, studies define population in a different way so sa population ecology ito yung definition niya sa genetics or in biology population is a group of interbreeding individuals of the same species which is isolated from other groups no and in human demography naman yung sa sa population sa tao population is a set of humans in a given area so ito yung different uh ano niya different definitions niya pero ang gagamitin natin is yung para sa population ecology so what is population ecology population ecology is the study of population in relation to the environment which includes environmental influences on population density and distribution, age, structure, and variations in population size. So, bakit natin kailangan? A specialized branch siya ng ecology which deals on uh, everything that is there to know about population. So, bakit natin kailangan pag-aralan to? Since uh, populations are, are composed of individuals inter- Inter interacting individuals with with one another or interacting with the, the their abiotic environment may affect ito sa 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 ecosystem like tayo we are a group of of our population of of human beings in sa isang lugar no onting may ginawa lang ang ang, ang isa jan or may mag magkakaroon ng effect sa sa ecosystem niya or sa community niya kung saan napapabilang yung yung, yung individual na yun sa population. So, we have six characteristics of uh, population. We have the size, density, patterns, demographics, survivorship curves, and population growth. Let's come now first with uh, population size. In all kasi, uh, the number of individual organisms in a population, usually denoted as N, the letter N. For example, a population of insect must might consist of a hundred individual insects or many more. Population size influences the chances of species surviving or going extinct. Uh, generally speaking, ang population size is yung totality lang naman ng uh, isang population. Like for example, yung population size ng uh, BS. Uh, EM 2C is 48, 47, something like that. So, population size are influ is influenced by four factors: the natality or yung birth rate, the mortality yung, or yung death rate, yung immigration and emigration. So, natality is the ratio of total live births to the total population in particular area over a specific period of time. Ito yung rate na ay ratio ng mga pinang pinapanganak sa isang population. So, yung mortality naman is ito yung ratio ng mga namamatay sa isang population. Whether it be uh, the cause of predation, the cause of disease, the cause of natural death. So, ito yung sa mortality. Emigration naman is yung bilang ng mga organisms na lumalabas, ay pumapasok, sorry, pumapasok, sa isang population, ay sa isang lugar na occupied ng isang population. Kaya, immigration. Yung emigration naman is yung bilang ng mga organism from an original population, papalabas. So, is how we depict uh, the relationships of a population size inside the population size. So, for example, we have a population of, of birds here. Yung birth rate niya is yung pagdagdag ng population so uh, pangingitlog ng 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 birds or yung pagpasok ng ibang species ng birds or the same species ng birds papunta sa population na yon. Yung death rates naman is due to predation, due to diseases and emigration. Yung pag-alis ng, ng ng isang ilang species ng birds sa population na yon. So yeah. 
Second one, the second characteristic is density, the population density, which is the measurement of the number of individuals in an area, usually shown as the number of individuals per square kilometer, or not necessarily per square kilometer, but per uh, square area, per square unit area, kung ano yung unit na ginagamit. So it is depicted. Uh, it is is it is de defined by the formula population density is equal to the total population over the total land area. So so far yung mga sumagot dun sa problem solving. May mga tama naman. May mga mang ilang ilan lang na ikaw correct ko mamaya maya. So so yeah. You have two attributes for measuring. Uh, population density. First one is the mobility or yung paggalaw ng, ng organism. It is based on movement of the organism. Yung paggalaw na sinasabi is yung pag-move ng population from one place to another. And the size or the abundance of the organisms present in the population. So, we measure density, we measure population density in two, in two uh, two methods. First is the total count method and the next one is the sampling method. Total count, as, as the name suggests, is just the total counting, counting, direct counting. Yeah, a total count. is direct counting of, of individuals inside the population at a given area. So, this, very, this is only possible for very few individuals sa isang population. No? So, pwede siya sa, sabaw ngayon sa isang population ng, ng lions, ng elephants, ng mga aso, sa kalye. Yung pwede mo siyang bilangin sa isang uh, isang area lang na hindi sila, yung, sa estimated area mo, pwede, pwede mo siyang bilangin. Pwede mo siyang i-photograph na muna, then saka mo siya pwedeng bilangin. So, ito yung technique na ginagamit ng mga scientists or mga ecologists or biologists sa pag-study ng mga uh, animals na very hindi naman very mobile mobile hindi naman sila uh, elusive no yung ano lang sila kung mga nandiyan lang sila sa isang lugar stagnant lang sila tapos matagal sila bago umalis so ito yung sa total count method yung sa sampling methods naman meron tayong dalawang uri ng sampling method based on uh, based on the availability ng tapos based din sa the kind of organism na i-study mo. If you're going to study uh, plants, plant species, uh, grass species, flower species, and you're going to uh, measure and estimate the total population size or the total population density or the population density rather, you will you're going to use the quadrat method, which is uh, is is in this yung mga gagawa ng ng quadrat no? ito this is an example of a quadrat method no? yung sa isang patch ng vegetation si Koya ini-study niya to ini-study niya to ay gusto niyang malaman yung yung total population size niya so kung ano yung kung ano bang uh, uri ng ng herb ng herb or ng shrub or ng grass or ng kung ano man na flora species ang present sa gusto niyang i-study. Ganito ang gagawin niya. Gagawa siya ng isang quadrat. Then, an area will be divided into several quadrats. Then, per quadrat, i-measure, i-bibilangin yung mga uh, uh, yung individuals doon na, na present. So, i-average then, saka i-compute. Ito yung, itong nakikita yung uh, formula dito sa baba. This is the formula for finding the average Num, uh, average, uh, the total, sorry, the total population uh, given the quadrat method. Pero yung pag, pag, pag hanap ng total population niya is just the same as the general formula natin sa population density, which is the population density is equivalent to total population over the land, the total land area. So, the same din, the same approach pa din yung gagawin. So, the next one, the next method uh, after quadrat method is used for for species that are very mobile, that is very that are very elusive. No, masyadong magalaw, masyadong masyadong 
Uh, mga masyadong masyadong elusive. Hindi masyadong nakikita, hindi siya uh, nagpapakita, nagpapasilip. So ganun. So we come now to the use of the capture based method or the capture mark recapture method. So an example dito is uh, a mark recapture method of iwan ko kung ng fish to. Uh, I think this is milkfish or yeah, this is milkfish. So mark recapture method ang ginagawa niya is uh kumukuha siya lang ng, ng sample then tinatag yung sam kung ilang samples like sam sabi dito is meron siyang yung si si, si boy si boy kumuha ng sampo na fish dito sa total population na to then itong sampo na fish na inatag tinag niya then uh minark na tinag then tig release babalik doon sa close na population so sa kan pagkatapos after some time i-resample yung 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 population kukuha ulit nung 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 kung ilang numbers nung una regardless if if marked siya or unmarked na 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 individual kukuha ulit siya nung kung ilan yung kinuha niya before saka lang uh, i-estimate kung ilan yung lahat-lahat na doon so yeah this is for capture based method so the next characteristic uh, of a population is its dispersion. So what is dispersion? Dispersion of a population is the pattern of spacing among individuals within the geographic boundaries and has three types. We have the clump dispersion or the clump or the clustered dispersion. We have uniform dispersion and we also have a uh, random dispersion dispersion. So Ito yung mga uri ng uh, yung depiction ng 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 uh, mga dispersions ng ng animals uh, ng individuals sa isang population ng population sorry so what is clump dispersion clump dispersion is where is a pattern where individuals are aggregated aggregated in patches ito yung uh, mga individuals na hilig maggrupo grupo like uh, ito yung very common makikita niyo to sa kahit sa diyan sa streets diyan sa labas ng bahay niyo makikita niyo siya na nangyayari like uh, yung grupo ng mga aso grupo ng grupo ng mga ano po ang ibang grupo grupo ng mga pusa o grupo ng hindi naman masyado ang pusa kasi din naman masyado eh aso yung sa wild naman mga wolves uh, pride of lions group of whales so ito yung usually makikita natin sa na in nature na very abundant na pattern. So, ano ang dahilan kung bakit uh, nagkakaroon tayo ng gantong klase ng pattern? Uh, clustered or clump dispersion may arise from social predisposition to form groups or for thermal regulation sa mga malamig na na klima like sa sa, sa poles natin. Nag-grupo-grupo ang mga animals because of thermal regulation. So, pag sinabi natin yung thermal regulation, ito yung pag-control ng, ng ano, pag-control ng, pag-control ng, what do you call this, uh, temperature as a group, like yung body heat, no? yung body heat ang nag-regulate ng temperature nila. So, another one is, nag-grupo-grupo ang, mga animals, ang mga individuals nag-form ng groups for foraging or yung paghahanap ng resources, paghahanap ng pagkain, mas madali kapag nagtutulungan ang mga individuals sa paghahanap ng, sa paghahunt, pagka-capture ng prey, paghahanap ng resources. No? So, and another thing is uh, for safety from predators. No? Sabi, may kasabayan tayo na safety in numbers. Sinasabi, this is true in the animal kingdom na it is much more easier for a predator to catch an, indi an individual rather than it is mix in with a group. No? Kapag, uh, kapag mas pag nakahalo ang isang individual sa isang grupo, nang pag nasa isang grupo siya, mas may hirapan ng isang ang isang predator na magpinpoint kung sino yung hunt niya don, kasi na overwhelm yung predator. So yun. Uh, another one is the tendency of progeny to remain near parents. So, kaya, 
kadalasan ng animal groups is magkakadugo, magkaka, mag-anak sila. Kasi, uh, some species of animals, when they uh, reach their sexually reproductive age, or yung age na kung saan pwede na sila mag-sexually reproduce, hindi sila umaalis dun sa group, but they, they, they reproduce within the group. So, yun. Here, here are depictions of of uh, what do you call this? Depictions of clustered or clumped dispersion. So, sa uniform dispersion naman, it is an evenly spaced distribution in which members of the population maintain a minimum distance from one another. This arises from, ano, this arises kasi from territoriality. Ito yung main, main reason niya kung bakit magkakaroon na nag-maintain ang isang individual ng, ng, ng distance from another, pero nasa isang population sila, because of territoriality. May, may sariling uh, space lang ang isang individual sa isang population. Uh, pag may pumasok doon na may pumasok doon na another organism from the same species or from different species it will serve as a threat in the ter- in the territory ng individual na yon bakit nagkakaroon ng ng uh, bakit ganito ang ang act ng ano ng ng indiv- ng species ng ibang species is because yung mating right nila yung mating yung females within that area na nasakop niya mawawala sa kanya. So, yung mating right niya, maaalis sa kanya. Yung availability ng resources na nandun sa area na yun, mawawala sa kanya. So, yun yung importance ng, ng, ng pag-defend, no? defense in, of the territory ng uh, mga hayop. Kaya baga, ang ibang animals tend to be territorial sa kanilang uh, resources. Like, sa kan- especially if if may youngs na sila, may mga, uh, may mga anak na yung mga animals, they tend to to be territorial. May certain distance lang na na pwede kanyang hindi pansinin. Pero pag pumasok ka na dun sa danger zone niya, may, prob- may possibility uh, ma- ma- ma-threaten siya. So, yun. So, these are examples of, of of uniform dispersion. Ito yung classic example sa nesting of penguins sa South Atlantic Oceans. Uh, king penguins, hindi king penguins eh. Ang bobo naman ang gumawa nito. These are emperor penguins. So, itong shrubs naman to is, uh, nakalimutan nyo yung pangalan. Basta, this is, these are found in Kalakum Desert. Kal- Kanakum? Kanakum? Kanakim? I don't know. Uh, nagkakaroon sila ng, ano, ng, disperse sila uniformly because they secrete uh, toxins in their roots from the roots na nagpo-prevent ng ng growth around a plant no As example itong plant na to hindi siya nag-aalaw ng growth palibot niya kasi nga may release siya ng toxin diyan para yung yung nutrients dun sa area na yon papunta lang sa kanya so para walang competition din so the next one is random dispersion that is based from uh, total unpredictability no hindi hindi, hindi nagkakaroon ng ng certain patterns no? ang ang behavior ng ng ilang animals does not uh, cohort with uh, uniform or 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 clustered because nga random siya no? kumbaga walang 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 sense ang sa territory walang territoriality parang competition na nangyayari yun so ano uh randomly distributed sila sa isang area walang walang certain pattern so Factors affecting dispersion, we have the density-independent factors or what we call your abiotic, your abiotic uh, environment, interaction with the abiotic environment. Yung mga pagbagyo, yung climate, yung temperature, yung uh, natural calamities, yung natural phenomena, yun yung ano, uh, ating density-independent factors. Then, yung density-dependent factor naman, is yung mga factors na within the population. So, interactions of the organisms within the population, like competition for resources, predation, parasitism, and infectious diseases. So, yeah. The fifth one, uh, fifth, sorry, 
Tama ba? No, the fourth one. Sorry. The fourth one. The fourth uh characteristics of a population is the demographics. No. Nakapaloob dito sa demographics yung age sex ratio, age structure, age ratio and what not. So this is a study of the vital statistics of a population and how they change over time. So most commonly nagginagawa ginagamit to sa especially sa human populations ang demographics. So ano to? Two statistics are important in demographics, which is the population age structure and the population 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 sex ratio. So, uh, animals tend to reproduce uh, sexually and asexually. Some 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 animals reproduce asexually, meaning nagkino clone nila yung sarili nila. It is is yung 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 gawa ng mga uh, some species of worms, some species of uh, Commonly, sub, common siya sa bacteria ang asexual reproduction. And minsan din uh, from sa ibang animals na kung saan may kinakat off silang part ng katawan, then mag-sprung up na ng panibagong individual na identical dun sa parent individual. And sa sexual reproduction, yung nagkakaroon ng ano, male and female genital interaction. So, some species naman, meron na silang uh, kumpara parang hermaphrodite sila mayroong male and female uh, parts sila sa katawan so ang nagkakarangyari is competition sa dalawa kung sino matatalo yun yung magiging female so something dagdag information lang so primary uh, ratio of males and females in a population ang sex ratio so we have three uh, categories for sex ratio the primary sex ratio or the ratio at fertilization Secondary sex ratio or the ratio at birth, and the tertiary sex ratio or the ratio in sexually mature organisms. So, yeah. In age structures, naman, uh, the number of individuals in each age class, in each age age class, as a ratio of one class to another. So, this can be specific categories such as people in the same age age range. Uh, I think age structure is divided into three. The pre-reproductive, the reproductive, and the post-reproductive age uh, sa animals. Pre-reproductive, uh, juvenile age, the reproductive, mature age, and the post-reproductive post adult age. So, yeah. Uh, this is, uh, yung age structure and the uh, sex ratio is, uh, comes hand in hand. And eh, makikita natin siya sa isang uh, population pyramid. So, which is a graphical illustration that shows the distribution of various age groups and sex ratios in a population. So, in three, three categories ng, ng, ng age nga, age structure is pre-reproductive, reproductive, and post-reproductive. So, tayo, nasa aging from, siguro I think 18 is not, 18 ata, ang, ang 18 or 20 ang reproductive mature age nasa reproductive mature age na tayo so we have the capability to create uh, new life to bring to bring about new life so dagdag din naman sa human population yun. so this is an example of a uh, population pyramid tapos na tapos na ako so life table Life table is, or the mortality table is the table which depicts the probability of mortality for each age. So, life table depicts uh, 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 measures, sorry, measures the survivability or the life expectancy of individuals in a population. So, dito nakapaloob kung gano siya katagal, gano, ilan yung chance niya mabuhay as, as time goes on, ilan yung uh, probability niya, niya na mabuhay after certain periods of time na uh, with within certain factors affecting the population so ano din yung uh, life expectancy niya kung anong age ba siya aabot ba siya ng post reproductive ng kung hanggang sa reproductive age lang ba siya so ito yung mga nakapaloob sa isang life table life tables are separate for males and females is because according to studies males and uh, males tend to be 
so the tenth day trash third hand female so tayo mga lalaki good luck sa atin kasi according to studies mas matagal mas madali mas mabilis ang buhay ng uh, males compared sa females so sorte ng mga babae talaga so yeah It's an example of a life cycle. I life cycle. Sorry. Life cycle. Life table. Life table. Not a life cycle. So, the fifth characteristic of the uh, popula- of population is the survivorship curve. Parang ano lang, table lang naman siya na nagdidepict ng, uh, na may measure, uh, pinagdidepict yung survivability ng isang organism. So, This is a graph showing the number of portions of individuals surviving at each 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 age range for a given species or group, constructed for a given cohort based on a life table. So, uh, survivorship curve has three types. Apa kaganda ng typing ng ng survivorship curve? We have the type one, is characterized by high survival in early and middle life, followed by a rapid decline in survivorship in later life. So. Tayong humans, we are included in type 1. No? We have a uh, very high probability na makapag-survive from birth papunta sa middle age. Then, after middle age, uh, malaki yung chance natin na mamatay na. No? Mas, mas lumalaki yung chance natin na mamatay habang tumatagal. So, yeah. Yung type 2 is an intermediate lang naman ng type 2 and type ay, type 1 and type 3. So, constant yung, yung ano niya. Uh, survivability niya sa sa isang graph na naka-diagonal line lang siya constant. So sa type 3 naman, yung kabaliktaran lang naman siya ng ng great ng great ng ng type 1 which is characterized by greatest mortality experience at early life with a relatively low death rates for surviving organisms. So yung mas malaki yung probab- mas malaki yung probability na mamatay yung mga organisms of the same species or sa isang population, mas malaki yung chance na mamatay siya at an early life, like from birth, papunta sa middle age. Pero pag nahit na yung middle age, pag nakasurvive, yung iilan na nakakasurvive dun sa population na yun, after middle age, uh, matagal na yung, patatag, tatagal yung buhay. Papat, 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 habang tumatagal, lalong tumatagal yung buhay. Habang tumatagal, lalong sumasara. <laughs> okay. So, This is a depiction of a life cycle. Life cycle, but life cycle, so like a population, as a survivorship curve. Sorry, survivorship curve. So, ito, yung humans are nakapalaob dito sa type one, type two. This is, I think this is an acorn. No, wala tayong acorn nato dito sa Pilipinas. So, yun sa ano naman sa type two is. I think this is a predatory bird. Yeah. Salamat Encyclopedia Britannica Incorporated for the picture. So the last uh the last characteristic of a population is its is its growth, no? Population growth refers to the increase or decrease of a population with time. So yung sinasabi natin na growth rate niya. So controlled by the rate at which new individuals are added to the population or the birth rate. And the rate at which individuals leave the population or the death rate. So, wala namang, ano, wala namang masyadong uh, sinasabi dito sa, about sa emigration and immigration. Kasi, uh, it, we are talking about the growth, um, yung pag-sprung up ng panibagong organism in time. No? So, population growth has two types. We have exponential growth and we have the logistic growth. Yung exponential growth is unrestricted siya, meaning, uh, infinite yung, eh, hindi naman infinite siguro, virtually infinite lang naman. Yung, ano no? Hindi virtually, sorry, mali yung adjective na sinabi ko. So, uh, basta, abundant. When when we say exponential, ang exponential growth is unrestricted, we mean to say that yung resources na viable for growth ng population, na kailangan ng population para mag-survive, is abundant siya. So, kaya, ang tendency niya is to shoot up over time padami nang padami what if yung population ay uh, yung 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 resources are in finite amounts no may may hangganan may certain may certain capacity lang ang isang environment na makakapag-support ng 
ng isang eh, ng isang population, yung growth ng population. So, ito yung nangyayari sa logistic uh, growth which is which is restricted by uh, resources by uh, yeah, by mainly by resources. No. So, yung carrying capacity is the capacity of the the environment or the ecosystem of, of a certain ecosystem that can support uh, survival of the population. So, tataas muna siya when uh, hit na yung point of maximum growth, yung growth rate niya is pabagal na ng pabagal. So, unlike sa 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 exponential growth, ngayon nga yan, yung growth rate niya doubles every one hour. So, nag-double siya every one hour. Patuloy-tuloy. Patuloy siya ng patuloy. This is observed in bacteria, bacterial studies, uh, bacterial growth, sa ibang ilang, ilang species. Uh, ito yung nangyayari sa... Theoretically, ito yung nangyayari. But most probably, ito yung, yung logistic load is more of a real situation. So, yeah. Exponential growth rate is... If a population has constant birth rate through time, and is never limited by food or disease, birth rate alone controls the pacing of the population growth. So, ito yun. Uh, ito yung formula natin na, na ginagamit sa pag uh, compute ng ating exponential population growth. Ang mali lang na nung iba is instead of raising uh, the Euler's number to the product of the rate and the time, yung ginagawa is inisa lang to. So, Euler's number is multiplied by the product of the rate and the time. So, mali-mali yung, yung ibang uh, answers dun sa nag-try magsagot dun sa problem solving. So, I would like you to, to revisit the module for week 3 and recompute kung paano to na nakuha. So, yung Paano, paano, kung paano mo ko ang population, exponential population growth, we have the total population, P, is equivalent to the initial population multiplied by the Euler's number, which is a constant number, uh, 2 point, ilan na yun? Kalimutan ko. Basta 2 point, chuba chuba. Uh, 2 point, fuck, I forgot. So, Okay, say so thank you. 2.71828. Yun yung estimated, uh, approximate, sorry, approximated Euler's number. So, pero hindi naman siya talaga yung sakto. Kasi parang, ang Euler's number kasi is parang pi lang siya. 3.14.16.148 something. May sunod-sunod pa. So, yung ginamit lang, yung pinagamit lang sa inyo is yung approximated which is 2. Point, ano nga yun? <laughs> Kalimutan ko yun. 71.828. So, so point, thank you. 2.71828. So, ang gagawin nyo is, before you, oh, before you multiply this, ito muna yung gagawin nyo. Multiply muna the, the, the rate or yung, yung percentage pala. Yung rate of growth is i-convert into decimal. So, I trust marunong na kaya niyan. So, uh, then, multiplied by the time which is means in days, in years, in hours, depende kung ano yung nasa problem. So, pag nakuha na yung product, then, solve na ito. Kasi according to PEMDAS, uh, parenthesis, exponent, bago multiplication. Exponent muna, bago multiplication. So, solve this first before multiplying the, uh, itong dalawa. So, nakuha po, clear, So, another example for a graph of a exponential growth. Basta, uh, yun yun. So, in logistic population growth naman, yun yung sinasabi ko kanina, this is unviable for a, a, a environment which has a carrying capacity of how much lang. No? As resources are depleted, population growth rate slows and eventually stops. Yung nangyayari kapag paubos na yung resources sa isang sa isang ecosystem or sa isang environment, yung growth rate niya, yung rate ng pag 
dami ng 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 population is mo bagal because na wala nang ano resources na viable na namatay na yung ibang sexually mature na organisms na namatay na yung mga males no? so nagkakaroon ng diseases then saka hihinto yung pagstop kasi nga wala na depleted na so it signified as a sigmoid shape or s shape curve so the carrying capacity or the k sa equation mamaya is is the number of individuals sa population the environment can support so ito yung formula niya for finding the logistic uh, population size pinag-aralan ko siya and mes medyo mahirap siya na problem kasi you need to find the natural logarithms of of certain numbers no, para makuha yung ilang ilang cons ay ilang 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 given no? so hindi ko na siya sinama sa ating long quiz okay yung exponential growth lang yung sinama ko ito yung comparison ng dalawa for for exponential and uh logistic growth so makikita niyo itong carrying capacity ito yung ito yung limit no kung kaya kung no ano yung kaya niyang i-grow uh, or i-kaya niyang i-support sa isang theoretical environment ito yung limit lang na kaya niyang i-support sa population so sabihin natin yung population size is 1.15 uh, 15 individuals sa logistic growth hanggang dun lang yung paglaki niya so tapos stagnant na then pababa na no so pero sa exponential growth if the theoretical environment has abundant uh, resources wala siyang ano walang limits patuloy na dadami over time so yeah limits the population growth the same as the limits for for dispersion no ang ang factors niya is depend uh, this density dependent or within the interactions of individuals in the population so and the density dependent factors which are which are the abiotic uh, environment which happens in the abiotic environment so we have these principles of limiting factor no the principles of limiting factor is defined as the principle whereby a factor that is in short of supply will limit the, the growth and development of an organism or a community so meron tayong tatlong uh, meron tayong tatlong uh, meron tayong tatlong uri ng ay tatlong tatlong scientists na gumawa ng mga principles for limiting factors. The first one is si Pops Liebig sa kanyang Liebig's Law of Minimum. This law states that the growth is regulated by a limiting factor in example, scarcest resource rather than the total resource available. So, sabi dito ni Pops, ang naglilimit sa growth ng isang population is yung pinakamadalang na resource na makukuha sa isang environment. For example, sa ano, sa isang desert environment, sa isang desert biome. Yung pinakamadalang na 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 resource din is yung water. So yung water, yun yung nagiging limiting factor sa sa no, sa sa sa, sa population na yun. So kasi may food, may food doon, may may, may habitat doon na pwedeng tirahan. Pero yung water talaga yung scarce. So yun yung naglilimit sa growth ng population. So yun yung sa sa living slow of minimum another one is black man's law of limiting factor this is proposed by a british plant physiologist in the name of frederick frederick frost blackman which states that a process that depends on multiple factors will have a rate limited by the pace of the slowest factor so ang sabi naman dito ni pops blackman ni pops frederick sabi niya yung uh, pinakamabagal na pinakamabagal na factor sa isang multi multifaceted uh, uh, sorry sorry mali yung pinakamabagal na process sa karamihan ng factor na nakaka-affect sa sa pag sa growth ng 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 isang population uh, yun yung yun yung naglilimit sa kanyang uh, sa kanyang sa growth noon ang example niya dito is yung sa photosynthesis. So, an example niya dito yung uh, if yung abundance ng carbon dioxide is uh, yung concentration ng carbon dioxide is is mawaba. 
then yung yung factor na yun yung carbon dioxide yun yung yung process for foot na kailangan for photosynthesis yun yung maglilimit dun kanya so yun yun so the third one is shell for law of tolerance the law of tolerance was developed by an american zoologist in the name of victor ernest shelford shelford to shelford so which states that the success of an organism depends on a multifaceted set of environmental conditions or environmental factors and that the organism would have definite minimum maximum and optimum environmental factors that determine the success of the success of the, the population growth. This signified that the limit of tolerance of the organism. However, the tolerance ranges may, may vary from, may vary within the same organism. For example, depending on the life stage. So, ang sabi dito lang, ang sinasabi lang dito ni Pops Shelford sa kanyang law of tolerance. Sabi niya dito, nakadepende sa, sa life stage ng organism ang kaya niyang itolerate na factor no so ay ba ang iya uh, sa early stage ng 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 life ng organism ang kaya niya lang itolerate is minimum minimum sunlight minimal minimal food so ganun so nakadepende sa nakadepende sa 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 need na, ng 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 organ ng isang organism ang law of tolerance so yung types of limiting factor kanina nasabi ko na to density in the, defined as the any force that affects the size of a population of living things in response to the density of the population so ito yung from within the population nga. so interactions from within the populations we have predation we have diseases and parasites or waste accumulations and we have here the indes, independent factors the abiotic uh, environment offers yung temperature, yung, yung climate, yung weather, yung natural disasters, natural phenomena, etc. And may dagdag pang isa dito is the single single limiting and co-limiting factors. Yung single limiting, as the name suggests, is isang factor lang ang nagli-limit sa growth ng population. And the co-limiting factor is a factor which does not directly uh, affects the growth of the population, but it directly affects one of a factor. So it increases limitation on the factor directly affecting the population. So, what about the example of the The example of the is the But the is the limiting thing. The limiting is yung nakaka-affect siya, hindi siya nakaka-affect directly. No? Indirectly affecting the population growth, but directly affecting, uh, directly limiting another limiting factor. Directly affecting another limiting factor. So, yun. Kaya, co-limiting co factor siya. So, tapos na! So, yun lang naman yung, yung ating, uh, yun lang naman yung ating, discussions ngayong araw. So, kaya pala ng dalawang topic sa isang araw. So, yeah. May questions po? Any clarifications? Any uh, violent reactions or what? Meron? Wala? Wala? Meron? So, I will be 